The Republican gubernatorial candidate Kelly Ayotte, former U.S. Senator, joining us live. Good morning, New Hampshire. Thanks for being with us. Uh, good morning, Jack. Always great to be with you. A lot going on, but let's try and keep it here locally for a little bit. Sure. Our national attention. But, you know, when you were first on with me uh, as a candidate for governor, I think it was the day after you announced, you had, a, you had an interesting line, and I've been noticing a lot of news between Massachusetts and New Hampshire recently. Everything from, you know, increasing tolls on pickup trucks uh, in Massachusetts uh, to how much they're, they're spending down there uh, for so-called migrant shelter or hotel support, if you will. But you said we're one election away from becoming Massachusetts. Can you elaborate on what you meant by that as you go further into this campaign? You're in a primary, of course. Uh, just talking about what, you're, what, you, what you mean by that. Jack, we are one election away from becoming Massachusetts because if you look at, for example, the two women who are running, uh, Cindy Warmington and Joyce Craig, Joyce Craig's been endorsed by Maura Healey, the governor of Massachusetts, and they support a lot of these policies that we don't want to bring to New Hampshire when it comes to taxing, spending, um, illegal immigration. We need only look over our southern border with what's happened with illegal immigration. They've spent about a billion dollars, Jack, housing uh, illegal immigrants and putting them at Logan's youth sports facilities and very little transparency. Even the Boston Globe kind of did an article, an expose on this that was shocking in terms of how much taxpayer dollars have been spent on this. So we don't want those policies here in New Hampshire. We can never become a sanctuary state like Massachusetts. We can't guarantee illegal immigrants housing like Massachusetts does or any type of benefits. Uh, No driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. So such a contrast in this race between my candidacy and the two women that are running on the Democrat end in so many ways, just in terms of our philosophy. And Massachusetts passed this so-called millionaire's tax, and people are leaving the state. As Governor Sununu likes to say, we're actually the one state in New England people are coming to. Uh, because they're walking with their feet on these high taxes and these policies right. that are really unsafe. You brought up Joyce Craig and, of course, Cindy Warmington, the other major Democrat, and Chuck Morris, former Senate president, Republican candidate, one of the major Republicans you're running against, but Kelly Ayotte, Republican gubernatorial candidate. You mentioned Joyce Craig. I just have to yeah. bring this up. The term illegal alien <laughs> is basically, I think, throughout the federal code on immigration as an acceptable term. When she was asked on WMUR recently, Adam Sexton's interview or show, um, about the term illegal alien, she says that's offensive to her, and she she thinks uh, folks like this should be called undocumented individuals. What do you make of this? I think it's absurd. It is actually the legal definition in our federal code. And guess what? They violated the law. They're here, here, here illegally, and they're aliens because they're not citizens of our country. They, they got here illegally. So that's why it's the federal definition. If, if she doesn't have the strength to actually say what it is, how is she going to be in a position as governor to keep this state safe? Well, we know that unfortunately, especially when we think about her aligning herself with the governor of Massachusetts, we can look at what the policies will be. A billion dollars spent on housing illegal immigrants, mm. sanctuary places in that state, it's not safe for our state, and it's also going to hurt our taxpayers and hurt the people here who we need help. You know, Jack, you know there's people here who need help, veterans right. and others who are yeah. homeless. That's where our resources should go. Let me ask you this. Recently, I just commented in the beginning, the Massachusetts transportation official who brought up this idea of uh, to- placing higher tolls, for example, on pickup trucks. You know, those darn people, those <laughs> yeah. darn people like myself who love my pickup truck every day. Uh, it's like my second house. Um, they basically want to make it more expensive. And I, I don't know the, the details here, but your significant other, uh, Joe, your husband, uh, sort of responded to the Massachusetts thing with his pickup and his A-10 license plate and the chairman of the democrat party ray buckley kind of went after the a-10 license plate now i know your husband was a fighter pilot in uh, the middle east and this was for the warthog jet he commanded but what's your reaction to that whole thing oh you know jack this was vintage because joe like you has a pickup truck and it's kind of like his second home too he loves his pickup truck in the back he has a veteran plate that says a-10 you know he served our country he was a fighter pilot uh flew the a-10 and Ray Buckley doesn't even get it. He comes after me on it, saying somehow the A-10 had to do with my election loss in 2010. 
What he missed is it's my husband's pickup truck. He served our country. Talk about disconnected. Uh, no clue about what our veterans do and, and the service to the country uh, that my family and others have given in this state. But mm-hmm. I love my husband's reaction because it's vintage Joe Daly, and you know him. He basically said that he was proud uh, for to fight for Ray Buckley's right to be an idiot. And so, you know, that's this vintage Joe because, you know, he, he understands that he's fighting for everyone's right to say whatever they think in this country. But that doesn't mean we don't call it out when he's clueless in terms of a, a veteran and what a veteran plate is, uh, you know, or what the A-10 is for, for that matter. Kelly, Ask I, our ground troops what an A-10 is. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Uh, real quickly, before I let you go, I want to ask you this, Kelly, a uh, Republican gubernatorial candidate. There's no doubt nationally and locally, no doubt, that Democrats – are going to want to talk about abortion rights all day long. I don't think they want to talk about the economy. A CNN poll says 70% of Americans think the economy is in poor shape and that the Biden administration has been a failure, 66%. So not good numbers for Joe Biden and the economy. Immigration, the border, we just talked about a lot of this. So abortion rights are going to be very loudly heard here uh, nationally and locally. And Cindy Warmington, one of the Democrats running, has already challenge you to a debate on your abortion right record. So let me come out and ask you candidly, do you want to ban all abortions in New Hampshire if you're elected governor? Absolutely not, Jack. And talk about a lie. I mean, Cindy Warmington has lied, and so has Joyce Craig, about my position on abortion. I support our current law, which gives women the freedom to obtain an abortion up to six months of pregnancy for any reason. And in the last three months, if God forbid they suffer from a medical emergency, or their baby has a fatal fetal anomaly, they can still get an abortion. So they're misleading the women of this state, which is disturbing. Um, you know, Cindy Warmington wants to debate me. You know what I'd like to know from Cindy Warmington is, how does she even sleep at night when uh, she actually went before our legislature and asked them, working for Purdue Pharma, making money for Purdue Pharma, and asked them to lessen regulations on OxyContin with all the people who have died in this state as a result of that drug? and then the continuing fentanyl crisis we face, because I've met those families every day. So if she wants to have a debate about that, I'm happy to have it. All right, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Hampshire. The Pulse Winners, Kelly Ayat, live this morning. Thank you.